What's up guys, and welcome back to Gabe Miller Music. Today we're taking a look at the making of my latest track. This is a VIP of a fairly recent track, which I haven't done a making of video for yet because I was waiting till now. Uh, this is Orbit, and it is a melodic dubstep slash drumstep track. And I'm going to go into only the melodic dubstep part because the drumstep part is basically the same, except for a couple tweaks that I'll go into in a second. So I'm going to start off with the first drop, the kind of melodic, first melodic drop. And I'm going to build it up piece by piece. Go to the most busy section here. So here we go. In terms of the drums, there's not really a whole lot going on here. I'll just stay in this section actually. So, minimal processing on the kick and on the snare. This right here is a loop. And I've got some processing on this, some EQ, to keep it out of the way of the kick and the snare frequency wise. Some compression to even out all the peaks. Especially, especially those kind of clap sounds. And then LFO tool, just subtly. Once again, to keep it out of the way of the kick and the snare, so. And then finally over here, this uh, crash cymbal and open hi-hat with a couple of crashes. I've used this... Uh, uh, patch in Ultra Beat before. It's a built in drum kit. You take off the bunch of EQ, get a, kind of this nice hi hat out of it. And these nice symbols that I've uh, used before on the future, used again here. So now I'll top into all the melodic elements. So starting off with the bass. This is a saw-based bass, and um, layered with that is a sub that is a sine wave. Just a pure, unadulterated sine wave. So together. And so this is just a saw that's been through some distortion and a little bit of detune. We add on the chords. So these two right here are super saws. This one's got a bit more mids. So they kind of fill each other out nicely. Then a couple of pads. So you get some of the some atmosphere out of it. And then finally the leads, and there are three of them layered right here. That one's almost enough on its own, but I wanted to thicken it up a bit. So we've got this saw-based lead. And this pluck. So you get some nice attack from that. So all together. And so these bases over here are all in uh, alchemy. And I didn't tweak the actual patches a whole lot, but what I did do was I processed them after the fact, so I got a bit of EQ, LFO tool on all of these to pump them because I'm too lazy to sidechain. And then a couple fun things like, uh, right here we got a pitch fall. Let me solo that. And, th and there's a better one over here. Which leads into this. And that is basically just this really fast little... Uh, element with the pan automated to go back and forth like that and then a couple other elements just to show you what they sound like in isolation and so all of that comes together a lot of that was just trial and error 
figuring out kind of what flowed. Then we get into the second uh, drop, so to speak, or the second half of this big long drop, depending on what you want to call it. So the main element here, I actually did not design from scratch. I was at the time I finished, or as the time I was working on this track, um, I had recently gotten serum and I was learning my way around it. And also at the same time, I'm working on learning FM synthesis and strengthening my sound design skills, which is something I'm kind of in desperate need of. And so full disclosure, I did design this based off of a tutorial that I'll link to in the description. It's kind of a virtual riot zomboy type sound. So that's this guy right here. <laughs> So just to explain a bit of what's going on here, though, it, uh, there's this thing, this wavetable, <laughs> words, that's being uh, FM'd from this guy right here. And a lot of the sound comes from the filter. So if I take that off, it's a nice sound, but if you uh, chuck on the low cut filter, that's where you get that wow, wow, wow from. And I have the... Uh, these in steps so you get a different degree of wowing so you get some variation out of the deal and a lot of the other elements in here are duplicates of that that have been further tweaked and then uh, just a couple other elements this guy's kind of fun this is a self-made wavetable on mirror and that's all uh, modulated once again the high pass uh, automation Kind of just nice, this nice growly effect with some kind of extreme distortion and a bit of flanging. And then uh, finally, let's go into this little screech at the end. This is kind of a fairly, kind of a dubstep staple at this point. You know, it's very 2012 kind of a sound. And uh, it's actually a very simple sound to make. So I did this just in massive. And the big thing is that it's just... <laughs> Two sine waves and distortion. In this case, three, because I want to add a bit of sub, but you don't really hear much of a difference. So basically what I've done here is I have this guy pitched up, and then I have the pitch modulated, so basically it jumps an octave really, really quickly when you hit a key. And then I also have the volume of the really high one modulated, so it jumps up that way as well, so you get this kind of attack from it. And then beyond that, I have some built-in distortion with one of the built-in effects in Massive, and then I also have an external distortion and a bit of EQ. Alright, and now I want to go into the second breakdown and then touch on the arrangement of all this real quick, and then we'll call it good. So, the vocal chop is pretty cool. It's um... Up every note in an octave that I chopped from a vocal and then tuned to be every note in an octave. So basically I could just pop it into my sampler and then just play it, which is a really kind of a handy thing to have. So if you guys want to have access to that, I put the raw vocal chop with all the, um, all the notes labeled in the sample pack I released at the end of 2016. So here's what that would sound like, just what you would get right after dragging it into your sampler. From there, some EQ. I later decided that wasn't enough, so I did more. Just boosting some high end and cutting some low end, some reverb, and some delay which is kind of serving as another reverb. Like that. And then LFO tool, of course, because nothing is ever complete without it. And then a duplicate of that, an octave up. To just add that last little bit of high end and kind of sparkle. If I can cut through a bit more. We got a pluck. And of course this uh, new snare. And you can't really hear it in the final mix, it kind of gets buried, but there is a reverse snare here. Always a fun uh, trick to play with. And uh, finally, let's go a bit into the intro. So the big key for the intro is a couple of new pads and a bunch of EQ and LFO tool. Uh, automation is the word I'm looking for. So we got the bass. 
So let's go into the couple of pads. These are both uh, alchemy patches. This is kind of these twinkly, sparkly pads that ended up having a cool feel. And then these two guys right here are filtered versions of the super saws that I filter in as this grows in energy. And then for the build, what I did was I slapped on a gigantic EQ basically to filtered out of existence until I want it to once again kind of come in so so there are two purposes to that one is to just um, suck a bunch of high and low end out so when the drop comes in you got all this new high end and low end that you had got used to not hearing so it kicks you in the face and then the other reason is to get out of the way of this uh, riser And this I actually just cannibalized from another project I was working on that I ended up scrapping. Same with the uh, drum fill that comes in right before the drop, which if you don't do that, you should. Um, if there's projects that you've been working on, there's probably at least one thing in there that's kind of cool that you might end up wanting to use later. And so it, that's not wasted time to work on an abandoned project because there are always a few useful things that you can get out of the deal. And by the way, this drum fill is with Logic's built-in drum kit designer with a crap ton of compression and this fill is also in uh, my sample pack from 2016. And then finally I want to quickly go over the drum step section so everything about that is the same the mix is all the same except for of course the tempo modulation and the way I set up LFO tool so basically normally I'll just slap LFO tool on as an effect but you can also set it up through routing and buses and such to be triggered every time you put in a MIDI note and that's what I did here which it, it takes a bit of setup so I don't normally do it unless I need to in this case that was really helpful so I did it and so what I ended up doing was I ended up doing a save as on this project file and then was able to tweak whatever I wanted on that new version and so once I was happy with the drum step section I bounced that bounce the dubstep section from the current project file I'm looking at right now and then uh, splice the, the, the two waves together and you have your whole song. So um, that is where I'm going to end today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this and uh, found it helpful for your own productions. I've got some uh, Lecter House coming up that will be making its triumphant return and I'm excited for you guys to hear it because I had a lot of fun working on it. So uh, that'll be coming up in the next few weeks. So be on the lookout for that. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Peace.